A couple weeks ago, I had the privilege of teaching an AutoCAD course at a small school in Thailand. Part of the training included some 3D modeling. Now, typically when I teach 3D modeling, I give students small, inexpensive objects, usually toys, and ask them to model the objects using the commands we've learned. Today, I thought we would model one of those objects because it's a great way to explore some of the 3D tools available in AutoCAD. The object that we're going to be modeling is a plastic pop-up ninja. Please note that as we go through this, we're not looking for the fastest way to create this object. Our goal is to explore as many tools as possible. Hopefully, along the way, you'll see a command or two that you haven't tried before. Let's start by creating a new drawing. I'll create that using the ACAD template. And let me mention that I'm going to be using the 3D tool set. We can do that by expanding the workspace menu and choose 3D modeling right here. I'm going to create the base first. I'll do that by drawing a circle. I'll click on screen and then we'll give this circle a diameter of 2.5 centimeters. I will then click the southeast hotspot on the view cube to give me a southeast view of that geometry. Now this circle is in 2D currently. Let's make this a 3D object. We'll do that using the extrude command. Here in the modeling panel, I'll click extrude. I'll select the circle and press enter. I will then assign a taper angle. I'll choose that from the ribbon. We'll make this 10 and then we'll extrude this a height of two millimeters. I'm going to type two and press enter. Now notice I made a mistake, two represented centimeters in this drawing. Not a problem, if I select the object and come over to the properties palette, we can see its height right here. Let's change that from two to 0.2 and I'll press enter. I'll press escape to deselect. Now let's create the pin that the spring is attached to. I'm going to create that from a primitive. Once again, in the modeling panel, I'll expand the primitive menu and I'll choose cylinder. I'd like to create that cylinder from the center of the top of this object. It will have a diameter of 0.5 and it will have a height of 0.9. Now that we're creating some 3D geometry, I'm going to adjust the visual style so we can see that geometry reflect light. We'll set this to conceptual. Currently, these are individual objects. I'd like to fuse them together. In the solid editing panel, I'll launch the union command and I will select both of these objects and press enter. They have now become one object. Since they're one, I will select them and in the properties palette, I will change their color to red since the object is red plastic. Next, we'll create the spring. In the draw panel, I'll expand this and choose helix. I'd like the center of the bottom of the helix to be at the center of the bottom of this cylinder and I'd like it to have a diameter of 0.6 at the bottom. I'll press enter so that the helix has the same diameter at the top. I will then select turns and the spring has 10 turns or 10 rotations. I will then assign a height of 3.5 centimeters. Let's back up a little and we'll center this. Now this looks pretty good, but the spring is still 2D geometry. To make this a solid, I'm going to draw a circle I'll place this here next to it and we'll give the circle a diameter of 0 0.03 and I'll press enter. This circle represents the cross section of that spring. To build the spring, I'll come back to the modeling panel. I'll open the menu and choose sweep. I will then select the circle and press enter and I'll select the helix as the path that will sweep the circle around creating that solid spring shape. This looks pretty good, except I don't really like how this looks on the front. Let's rotate the spring. I'll do that by selecting it. And as long as I'm using any visual style other than 2D wireframe, I can see this gizmo. This is the rotate gizmo. Now, sometimes this one won't be the first one that you see. If you right click on the gizmo, we can flip to the move or scale as well. Let me right click and we'll set this back to rotate. Clicking these ribbons, I can rotate the objects in 3D. I'm going to select the blue ribbon because I'd like to rotate the spring around the Z axis. You can see that as I move my cursor. I'm going to lock my ortho. This allows me to rotate the object in 90 degree increments. Let's rotate it to here and I'll press escape when finished. Now let's create the head portion of the toy. We'll do that by going to the top hotspot on the view cube and then I'll click the arrow to rotate this 90 degrees. Next, I'm going to open up Windows Explorer. From here, I'll drag and drop in a photo I've taken of the object. I'll click once to set the image location and then I'll drag this out and click again and then I'll press enter to accept the rotation angle. I'll be tracing on top of this image, so let's select it and in the contextual ribbon, I'm going to drag up the fade setting just so that it'll be easier to see my geometry when it's drawn on top of the photo. I'll press escape when finished. Let's zoom in. Next, we'll recreate the circle that represents the outside edge of this head. 
Let's expand the circle menu and I'll choose three point and then I will click three points along the outside edge, getting as close as possible. Let's back up and then I'm going to draw another circle that represents the size that I'm looking for. I'll place this over to the side and I'm going to give this a diameter of 3.5 centimeters. Now to set this circle and image to the appropriate size, I'm going to use the align command. Let's expand the Modify Tools. I'll choose Align, and I'll select both of these objects and press Enter. I'd like to align it from the center of this circle to the center of this one. And then from the Shift Right Click Quadrant of this circle to the Shift Right Click Quadrant of this one. I'll press Enter, and then I'll choose Yes, that I'd like to scale the objects. Now that image and the geometry is appropriately sized. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to launch the Move command, and I'll select my circles and press Enter. And then I'm going to pick them up from a point on screen and I will just slide this over to center that mask in the circle a little bit better. Now let's recreate the geometry of the mask. I'm sure you'll agree that tracing this image will be much easier than calculating all of the dimensions. I'm going to trace this using the polyline command. I will then zoom in and I'm going to turn off my running object snaps and my ortho. I will then click to start my polyline and I'm going to loosely work my way around the outside of this shape. I'm trying to keep my endpoints from being too close together. At the risk of destroying the movie here, after I finish tracing this, I'm going to smooth the geometry using the spline option of the pedit command. The closer you have your vertices, the less this will smooth. We'll work our way around and then at the very end I want this shape to be closed, so I'll come down and choose the close option. I will then double click the geometry and I'll choose spline to smooth it. I'll press escape when finished. At this point I would do the same thing to trace the geometry for the eyes. Fortunately, through the miracle of time lapse photography, you can see that work has already been completed. Let's back up. At this point I no longer need the image, so I'm going to select it and then from the contextual ribbon I'll open the external references panel, I'll right click on the image and I'll choose detach and then I'll close the palette. Now let's convert this geometry from 2D to 3D. I'm going to start with the spherical shape. Let's open the primitives menu and I'll choose sphere. I'd like to create that sphere at the center of this circle and we'll bring it out to the shift right click quadrant of the edge. Since things are a little hard to see, let's adjust the visual style back to 2D wireframe. I will also select the sphere and from the properties palette we'll make it red and I'll press escape when finished. Let's tip this up so we can see the geometry in 3D. This time I'll hold the shift key in the mouse wheel and I'll push this up. Next I'd like to extrude these shapes up through the top of this sphere. Going back to the modeling panel I'll choose extrude and I'm going to select the mask and the two eyes and I'll press enter. I'll pull these up so they pass out of the top of the sphere. I'd like to extrude the eyes a little bit further. Notice that if I select these any object that has been extruded will have a grip that you can use to adjust the height. I will pull each of these up a little bit farther and I'll press escape and then I'll set the visual style back to conceptual. So I've got a red sphere, I've got a white mask, let's make these eyes black. I'll select both of those shapes and from the properties palette I'll choose a nice dark color like 250. I'll press escape when finished. Now let's create some copies of this geometry. I'm going to lock my ortho. I'll come up and launch the copy command and I'll select this geometry and press enter. I'm going to pick it up from a point on screen and I'll create one and two copies and I'll press escape when finished. Let's use this first one to create the cavity where the mask is going to be placed. To create the cavity I'll use the subtract command. From the head, enter, I'd like to subtract the mask, enter. I can then select these eyes and press delete, I don't need them. If I orbit the model now we can see there's the opening where the mask is going to be placed. Now we'll create the mask. Once again, I'm going to go back to the subtract command. From this mask, enter. I'd like to subtract both of these eyes, enter. Then I'll come over and from the solid editing panel, I'll choose intersect. I would like to have the intersection of these two objects and I'll press enter. This shape will now fit perfectly in this cavity. Let's select it and I'm going to change its color to white. I'll press escape. I will then launch the move command and we'll pick it up from the center of this circle and place it to the center of this one. Now I need to do the same thing for the eyes. Let's take this mask, I don't need this, let's remove it. 
Basically, I want the intersection of each of these eyes and the sphere. I could do that one at a time using the intersect tool, or I can come up and launch the interfere command. Interfere is a lot like clash detection. Using interfere, I select my first set of solids. In this case, I just have one, and I'll press enter. And then I select my second set of solids and press enter. And then it runs a clash detection, and you can see where those objects clash. Now, in addition to seeing the clashes, I can also choose to keep that geometry. So let's remove the check from the delete option, and I'll click close. Now, I don't need these two or the sphere. I'll select them and press delete, and I'm left with the eyes, which I do want. I'm going to select both of these. We'll set their color to black. I'll press escape, and then I will move these from the center of the circle to the center of this circle. I will then select these circles, and I'll press delete. Let's go back to a top view. I'll click the top hotspot on the view cube, and I need to slice off the bottom of this sphere. That's where the suction cup is placed. I'm going to launch the line command, and I'll draw a line from the quadrant of the bottom of this circle. We'll just drag this over, and then I will move this line. I'll just pick it up from a point on screen, and we'll drag this back to the left. Next, we'll offset. My distance will be 0.2. We'll offset this line inward, and I'll press Escape. I will then select this original line, and I'll press Delete. So this line represents the area that I'd like to slice off of that sphere. Let's go back to a 3D view, and you can see the line is passing right through the middle of the sphere. So let's move it down. I'll launch the Move command and select that object and press Enter. I will then click on Screen, and my ortho is locked. So I can drag this in the X direction, the Y direction, or you can see as I pull this down, it's moving it in the negative Z direction. Let's pull it down just so that it's below the sphere. And then I am going to extrude this line, enter, and I'll pull this up through the sphere. Basically, I created a surface. Anytime you extrude an open object, it will create a surface, as opposed to extruding a closed object, which will generate a solid. Let's press Escape. From the Solid Editing panel, I'll launch the Slice command. I'd like to slice my sphere, enter. I'd like to slice it using a surface. Which surface? This one and I'll press Enter to keep both sides. I can then select my surface and geometry, and we'll delete those. I can select the bottom half of the sphere, and I'll delete that. I can also select this object, and we'll switch its color back to red. Let's press Escape. Now let's rotate the head so that it's facing forward. I'll select the geometry, and then I'll use the red ribbon. Once again, my ortho is locked, so I can rotate this in 90-degree increments. I'll just pull straight up. We're rotating that around the x-axis. I'll press Escape when finished. That looks good. Now we'll create the shape of the suction cup. I'm going to create that as a primitive. In the Primitive menu, I'll choose Cone, and I'll place this over to the side. We'll give the base a diameter of 2.5, and then I'll choose Top Radius. We'll give this a top radius of 0.5 and then I'm going to give this a height of 0.5. Let's zoom in. If I orbit around this, that's pretty good as far as the suction cup goes, but it is solid. I need to hollow this out. There's a command in the solid editing panel. If I open this menu in the lower right, I can choose Shell. This allows me to hollow out a solid object. I'll choose Shell. I'll select the suction cup. Then it's asking me to remove faces. I'd like to remove the bottom. That area is unnecessary. I'll just click right in the middle of this face and press Enter. Now I can enter the shell offset distance. I'm going to type 0 .05, and I'll press Enter. There we go. That looks good. Let's move this into position. I'll use the Move command, and I'll select the suction cup, Enter. I'll pick it up from the center of the top, and we'll place this to the center here at the bottom of the sphere. I will then launch the Move command again, and I'll select this assembly. I'm going to pick it up from the center of the bottom, and we'll place it to the center of the bottom here. I'll launch the Move command one more time, and I'll type P for Previous. We'll reselect the previous selection. Enter. I'm going to pick it up from a point on screen, and my ortho's locked, so I can now drag this up in the Z direction. Now the actual toy shows about seven rotations of the spring, so I can drag this up until I see about seven on screen. That looks good. I can then eliminate these circles. Let's turn on Selection Cycling, and I'll click here. I want the circle. I'll press Delete. Let's click here again. I want that circle, and I'll press Delete. Finally, if I want this model to have a more dynamic look, I can right-click on the View Cube and choose Perspective. And with that, we have completed our project. 
Now, if this is your first experience using AutoCAD's 3D tool set, I would recommend that you take some time and explore these tools in more detail. The 3D skills you learn can be extremely valuable, not just in AutoCAD, but also in the AutoCAD verticals like Civil 3D, Plant 3D, and Map 3D. In addition, the objects that you create here can easily be passed to most any application that supports 3D geometry. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.